Hi everybody, my name is Maribel and I am doing this video for those of you who are about to go uh, and get your gallbladder removed or for those of you who are thinking about it or for those of you who have had it removed and um, are still going through it and knowing what to expect. So let me start from the beginning. I had a lot of digestive issues. Um, I was diagnosed with IBS acid reflux, heartburn, I just a lot of digestive issues. Um, and this past year it just seemed to have been getting worse. And no matter what I took, I was still getting bloated and having a lot of gas and uh, I was very uncomfortable. It got to the point where I just stopped having dinner. So it was just breakfast and lunch and then I, uh, I had all day to you know, let it digest. Uh, and then I just wouldn't eat dinner because otherwise I would suffer for it. Uh, so it went on, it's been going on like that for a while uh, until about June of this year. Uh, and um, I was at home, I had had like a late lunch and I started having a sharp pain right below uh, my rib cage, so about right here, right below my breast, right, uh, just right there, hurt really, really bad. Um, so much so that I knew it wasn't normal, so I went to urgent care, and I got there, and right away the doctor told me, <clears throat> it, you know, it's, it's your gallbladder. Um, so, but he, uh, he didn't have the equipment there at the time to do the test, so he set me off um, with orders to have an ultrasound and told me to eat a, uh, a non-fat diet until then. So um, I suffered for about a month. I was getting really bloated, a lot of pain. Um, but I was trying really hard to eat a non-fat diet. I went to my, finally, like a month later, I had my ultrasound appointment. Um, by then I was feeling a little bit better. And... Um, about a week after the ultrasound, I got a call from the urgent care doctor who told me that everything looked okay, but to follow up with my primary doctor. So I thought, you know, he must have been wrong. I don't have anything wrong with my gallbladder. Uh, and I seem to have been getting better. So I made an appointment with my primary doctor, um, but she was very busy, so I didn't have an appointment. I couldn't get into like a month later so um, you know the pain just kind of came and went I was trying to eat a little more healthy I was totally skipping dinner altogether and just having breakfast and lunch some days I would eat good um, and other days um, I didn't and I suffered for it but um, my primary doc um, about a month later, I mean to take that back, in September, mid-September, I was at school and I'm a teacher and I was having what appeared to me to be a heart attack. I was having pain. I was raining up my face. I was having pains in my side right there again, uh, pains in my arms. I was having problems breathing, couldn't catch my breath. I thought I was having a heart attack or a stroke. So I went to the emergency room and they did a whole bunch of tests and found that I was not having a heart attack or a stroke, but that it was probably associated with my gallbladder and to, that I needed to follow up with my primary doctor. So um, I went to my primary doctor and she looked at my results from my ultrasound and she said, oh, you have gallstones. Did they not tell you that? And I was like, no. <laughs> um, so turns out months later, I find out that I have gallstones and that the only gallstones, you cannot pass them like kidney stones. So um, she sent me to a specialist because the only really remedy is to have your gallbladder removed. Um, so um, a few weeks later, I went in to um, 
maybe a few weeks later or a month later, maybe I've more like a month later, I went in to go see the surgeon and uh, it was a really quick uh, appointment. He looked at my results and said, yes, you have gallstones. I recommend you move them, remove them. You, you know, um, and I told, you know, apparently it's elective surgery, which to me sounds kind of funny because it wasn't a choice. And I had, I had to have my gallbladder removed because I wasn't living normally. Like I, where you're totally skipping a meal and you're having lots of pain all the time. Uh, it's not good. And you have problems breathing. It's, it's not good. So, um, I made my appointment, um, my surgery was scheduled for December 17th. In the meantime, I had to wait about a month for um, my surgery. And I was in a lot of pain. I was just trying to eat a low-fat diet and trying to stay good, uh, which some days were harder than others. But... Um, it got to the point where I was looking forward to my appointment, I mean, to my surgery. I have anxiety attacks, but when I thought about my surgery, I actually looked forward to it because I was thinking, you know, this is just the first step to feeling normal again. So um, about a week before, I went for my pre-op appointment where I went to my doctor and he, you know, answered any questions that I had. Then I had some blood work done and an EKG. Um, and then I saw the nurse who gave me some instructions for the night, uh, what to do before and after surgery. Um, the um, doctor did allow me to take my anti-anxiety medicine before, the day before, no, no, the day of. Just with a little bit of water because I have like I said I have anxiety attacks so I didn't want to have an anxiety attack on the day of so I was allowed to do that um, so in getting ready for the surgery I think um, the best advice I can give you is some of the things that I did before the actual surgery I went and I got my medicine beforehand so I had some um, antibiotics and some pain medicine. Uh, I had that all filled and um, ready to go. I got some foods that I was going to be able to eat. Um, I got some Jello, some crackers, some soups, um, some unsweetened um, applesauce, and lots of water and juice. Um, so I had it all ready for me. I also set up a, a little table. Uh, next to my bed um, where I kept everything that I was going to need because I knew I was going to have problems getting up. So that table um, held my medicine. It held all my remotes. It held my Alexa because I know I needed an, a timer to you know remind me to take my pain medicine every four hours. I had some paper and pencil uh, to jot things down. Um, I had some tissue, an ice pack. Ice pack really helps too for the swelling. Um, yeah, and so I just had it all set up there ready for me for uh, the actual surgery. I made sure I had several pairs of pajamas so because I knew I was going to be living in my pajamas for the next couple of weeks or a few weeks. Um, and I had a recliner that was put into my bedroom. Um, so that way I can sit on it during the day. So I'm really glad that, I mean, if you do anything, it's prep beforehand. It'll make the surgery, after surgery, so much easier. So the night before surgery, I washed with these soaps here. This I got from the nurse. Um, they give you two of them. And... It has soap on it, and you're supposed to wash your, your body from the neck down uh, the night before. And um, don't use any deodorants or perfumes or shampoo or anything like that. Just, just what's on the sponge. 
and they gave me two of these so I, uh, I took a shower the night before and then they gave me a second one of these for the morning of excuse me and um, I was not allowed to shave because uh, they didn't want any open wounds so I um, made sure I, I shaved a couple of days before so that way um, I didn't want to go in with, there with you know hairy armpits or anything <laughs> um, so I washed the, the morning the day the night before and I had lots I had lots of water because I wanted to make sure I was hydrated for when they took blood or put my IV in the morning of I got there around 830 and make sure you're wearing loose clothes no bra especially no bra because when you put your clothes back on your incisions are going to be right where your bra at the bottom of your bra so you don't want you don't want to uh, wear one and then loose pants uh, because you will have an incision right at your belly button and you don't want any elastic or anything to go there either uh, so the surgery went well it was about an hour I, my actual surgery was at 10 30 and um, it went well my um, I was a little nervous they put you out right away um, I woke up okay and uh, going home everything was a little bumpy and so every little bump seemed to hurt me and I, I, I live about 30 minutes away from the surge, uh, the hospital so it was um, painful the drive home but um, I did not sleep right away you know yeah, they tell you oh go home and sleep it off I couldn't sleep I was in so much pain the codeine that they had given me was not enough I was watching the clock for every four hours because I needed my pain medicine um, I was in so much pain I could not sleep I could not lay down it was hard to uh, take deep breaths it's still a little hard I'm on, I'm on day six right now and I feel like I'm having a hard time breathing just right now <laughs> but um but it was painful to take a deep breath then. Um, after the first day, the pain was, each day got better. I had less pain and was able to finally sleep. I don't know if it was because I was, the pain was lessened or because I was sleep deprived and I just needed to sleep. I was so dizzy um, and weak. The, and bloated. I mean, you are so beyond bloated. The best thing you can do to relieve that is to walk around. Don't walk around by yourself. Have someone hold you because you are dizzy and it is, you're still in pain. But you, the best thing you can do is walk around your house, walk around your room that you're in. Because in the, during the surgery, they pump in so much gas um, into your body cavity um, that it's stuck, it's trapped and so the more walking you do the more it releases it um, I also took Gas-X um, but once, only once I started eating um, because the Gas-X is not going to help you right after surgery because the gas is not in your intestines it's in your body cavity so the only thing that can help that that air to, really, to leave is to walk around so walking is your friend um, but again do it with uh, some assistance because you do get dizzy and um, you're weak and you're in pain you'll need some help get um, sitting up um, I'm lucky that my bed reclines so I um, I slept or I have been sleeping sitting up for the past six days and um, I tried last night to sleep on my side it's still too painful to do that so I'm just sleeping on my on my back I have I 
eat a uh, first day I was only eating like you know the jello and the water I want to add some crackers for the nausea make sure your doctor gives you something for nausea my doctor prescribed me something that was placed on the back of my ear it was like a like a patch so it wasn't a another medicine that I needed to take it's it kind of just like a little patch there and that helped with the nausea but I still felt like every time I took the medicine it just made me more sick so um yeah I was eating crackers for that um then I think like day two or three I tried to have a little bit of spaghetti but man that mainly didn't work day four or five I had a salad and whew, that was the wrong idea because salad, all the greens, gives you gas. It made me so bloated. It was like day one. Wow. So salads, things that are going to give you gas is not a good idea until you're starting to feel better. Um, so again, this is... Day six, I just wanted to give you guys an update of where I'm at. I'm actually, this is actually the first day that I am, I, I have left my bedroom. I actually took a shower and put on some makeup. I have my follow-up appointment, not with my surgeon, but with my primary doctor. So I'm going to, um, the other day I tried to drive because uh, I was feeling so good. And I went, I got out of my car, started walking to the store door and I walked right back cause I felt like I was going to faint. So don't push yourself too, too soon. I also tried to clean a little bit. Bad idea. Uh, your body will hit you for it the next day. Um, you want to just rest, watch as much as your time to watch movies and read books and Call some people up that you haven't talked to in a while. Um, just take this time for to rest. And uh, I, that's something I need to remind myself to do. I'm just not that type of person to sit around and do nothing all day. It's hard for me. I, I think I look around the house and think of all the things that could, I could be doing. So, And then with it being Christmas in just a few days, I have gifts I haven't wrapped stockings that are not stuffed I don't know how the turkey dinner is going to get cooked so uh, all that is kind of adding to my stress but I need to just step back and let my body heal so again I hope this med um, this video helps you in your preparing for the surgery or deciding whether or not you want the surgery um for me, it really wasn't choice. I had to have it just so I can try and go back to being you know, what I consider normal. Um, it's only a week, six days in. Um, I'm going to try and have like a follow-up in like another week. Maybe do every, a, a week updates or and, and then a month update. I do go back to teaching in a few weeks. I'm sorry, in a couple of weeks. And I'm hoping that I can do it because I know it, when I teach, I have to stand all day. And I don't think, I don't know if I can do that. I do feel really sleepy. Like right now, you can see it in my eyes. I look droopy. I don't know why. But um, I feel very sleepy and tired. Maybe because I'm sleep deprived. But um, I really can't. I'm not sleeping comfortably sitting up anymore. So anyways, um, I'll give you guys an update later.